Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, we're going to use Abacus to perform a steady state thermomechanical analysis uh, of a pipe. So we previously performed a heat transfer analysis um, and then separately stress analysis, but this is doing both of them together. So there's a coupling between temperature and displacement. So we're going to solve for both of them. So let's jump across. So open up Abacus, create a, like a standard explicit model. Uh, as always, we'll make sure the working directory is set. And my model is using this Abacus models one. And that's where the temporary files are going to be created. So if you open up that in, in your um, file explorer, you'll be able to see that. So I'm just going to save this model database now. I'm going to call it um, Flatpike. You may like to create a separate directory even for each model database because so many files get created. And for example, if you had job one in both of them, you'll start being overriding each other. So I'm going to rename this model as well to steady state and um, hot pipe, just um, since you can then look at the transient and um, hot pipe, you can copy this and change things. So we're going to make a part, right click and click create. In this case, it's going to be axisymmetric problem. It's actually a 1D problem, this, this, this problem. So the fields will all only vary across the thickness of the pipe. So if you plot any radial um, line along any radial line coming from the center of the pipe outwards, it'll always look the same. So if you take any pizza slice of the pipe, it'll look the same all the way around. So imagine we have a, a pipe that's near the seabed or on the seabed, and it has a hot fluid flowing in it, and you have some cold water pressurized seabed and water near the seabed around it. So there'll be some gradient of the pressure distribution from the, the sea, but we're going to ignore that and assume it's axisymmetric. So click axisymmetric, we'll set the approximate size to one, and um, because our, our, our pipe is going to be a fraction of a meter, and that's just the background size of the grid. So um, Abacus automatically gives us the axis. We can delete that and put it in a different orientation if we want, but that's the default orientation. So if you imagine that's going to go up through the center of the pipe, so the pipe is wrapping around that. So we're cutting through the wall. So we're just going to have a little rectangle, and that's going to be uh, through the tour, just kind of waving us around that axis there. And so we're just going to draw a little rectangle, and the inner pipe radius is 0 0.1 meters. So 0 0.1 as 0 is the start. And then we're going to go 0 0.12 is the outer wall, <coughs> the outer wall radius. And the solution won't vary in the axial direction. So we could make it very long, but I don't want to waste elements in that direction because it's not, um, the solution isn't changing that direction. So I'll just make it very thin. So I'll, I'll just make it uh, one um, hundred of the outer wall thickness, but I, I can make it anything and just force to have one element. So just like that. Press middle click or escape, and then middle click again and press done. So that's our pipe. Here's the axis. So it's revolved around that. So it's a little bit maybe difficult for you to visualize this, but imagine that um, we have the pipe flowing vertically, and then we just cut it down the center. So we can see a piece of the wall uh, down right here, and we're just taking a slice on that. So this is a slice of the wall, so the wall continues in that direction, and then it will be rotated around. Uh, so let's create a mesh. So let's rename the part. We are pipe. And double click on the mesh. And we're going to, instead of seeding the entire part, we're just going to use this seed edges uh, method. So because I only want to guarantee that one element in, in, the, in the axial direction, um, I'm just going to left click there and then holding shift, click on the far side so you'll see they're both red and click done. And then I'm going to set by number and I just want to have one element in that direction. So I press Y and OK. So I'll have a node, um, node there, 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 and there. Now with this still selected, see the edge, I'm going to select the top and then holding shift, click the bottom. Um, so you can see a few red edges, click done. So now I'm going to set by size, and I'm going to set them to be one millimeter. Let's apply. OK. Now I can click Mesh, middle click, or press yes. So you can see the only elements in the um, X direction, so across the pipe thickness. 
And next, material properties. So this can be steady state analysis. So the governing equations we have for the conservation of momentum, so the conservation of force, which um, uh, uh, for an elastic material, we only have two material parameters. So um, we're going to use aluminium for this problem. So we're going to set the elastic parameters as 69 gigapascals is the most modest approximate aluminium, 0 0.33 is the approximate Poisson's ratio, depending on the alloy or the grade. Um, but when it's a coupled problem, the, there's an, an extra mechanical uh, parameter or property, and that's the coefficient of thermal linear expansion. And so basically, if the material heats up, it'll try to expand. So by how much it uh, tries to expand is governed by this uh, coefficient of thermal expansion. So if I go mechanical and expansion, that's our coefficient of thermal expansion there. So we're using uh, for aluminium would be 23e to the minus six uh, per degree. Um, and then for the heat transfer analysis, um, it's steady state. So it's the sum of all heat fluxes into a, a node will equal zero, and heat flux is the conductivity by the gradient of temperature. So we need a conductivity as well. So thermal conductivity. And uh, for aluminium, it's 250 watts per meter Kelvin. And so if you want to make this do a transient analysis, then um, in the transient momentum equation, it'll be mass of acceleration equals some of the forces. But if you do per unit volume, it will be density by acceleration equals the force per unit volume. So you'll need the density. And then in the uh, thermal equation, you'll have the rate of change of the internal energy. So that will be density, which you already have, will have defined by specific heat by the um, time derivative of temperature. So you'd also have to specify the, the thermal conductivity. So I can specify that uh, now but it won't be used by Abacus and it won't give you a warning. So just be careful if you think Abacus is using properties. Generally, if you're not sure if it needs properties, just don't define them, define the minimal. And then when you go to run the job, it'll tell you what's missing. And so that's everything. Follow the standard way to apply it, make a section, so aluminium section, uh, select aluminium, double click, section assignment, select this part. We're gonna make a set called all, Fine. Now let's make an instance of the part in the assembly. So double click. It's okay. Now we have to make our analysis step. So it's not going to be static general because that's only for stress analysis. It's not going to be heat transfer because that's only for a heat transfer problem. So we want to have both of them together. So that's called couple temp displacement. So couple temperature displacement. So within this, you can actually set steady state or transient. So we're going to set steady state. Um, and the time period doesn't matter, so we'll just leave it to, to one. So now we have our um, step set up, we just need to set our boundary conditions. Uh, so for the boundary conditions, um, let we, since we're solving a heat transfer problem and a stress problem at the same time, we have to specify boundary conditions for both. So for temperature um, and for displacement. So for displacement um, equation, we're gonna apply pressure on the inside. So the inside of the pipe, uh, in this case, we're assuming that there is a, if I select the inside here, now I'm not going to make a surface in this case. Press done. And the inside pressure, we're assuming there's a fluid at 60 megapascals flowing in turning in, in the pipe, so high pressure fluid. On the outside, we're going to do the same thing again, double click. And outside, I'm going to call it pressure. Select the outside, don't make a set again. And if if you go to the slides, we, uh, there's a problem where we're suggest where you're stating that the, the pipe is on the seabed and the depth of the sea is given. So for that given uh, calculation, if you look at the average pressure at that depth, um, it's 0 0.196 and um, megapascals. So th this comes from from uh, the problem in the thermal mechanical slides. So it's relatively low to the inside pressure, but not negligible. And in this case, just to stop the part flying away, we'll stick a symmetry plane on the, the top and bottom as well. So I'm just going to stick a um, symmetry condition in the y direction on the top and the bottom. And because otherwise this part could just uh, 
could just start sliding in the axial direction. In reality, it's a long pipe, so it's actually constrained. Uh, so this would be a, a good estimate for a long pipe. So set the y sim, so the u2, the displacement, y direction would be zero. So the pipe wall can expand outwards, but it can't start moving or translating in the axial direction. Uh, so that's the displacement condition now for temperature. Um, for this steady state problem, we're going to play a very simple boundary condition. We're going to assume we have a hot fluid at 70 degrees inside. So we're just going to go PCs, not a mechanical condition, but a other. Set it to temperature. So I'll go inside P, inside temperature. Um, I probably could have created a set in this case because it's instantly getting messy now with multiple conditions. So I'll select there, press done. I'm going to set the temperature of 70. So I'm assuming the fluid is going really fast, so the inside temperature is empty. In fact, that's probably a pretty poor assumption because the conductivity value meaning will be so high uh, that it will maintain its wall temperature different from the other fluids. Um, but you'll find that in, if you do the transient version of this analysis using a heat convection condition, the film condition. So I'm going to set the outside um, wall temperature. So outside T, make sure to pick other temperature. And pick it over here. And I'm going to assume the outside wall temperature, let me see, I wrote it down here, is five degrees Celsius. So I could do this in Kelvin, but um, Kelvin and Celsius, there's just an offset between them. So it's even though Kelvin's the standard unit, it's actually fine to use uh, Celsius in almost all the cases. Um, OK, that's all our boundary condition set. Make sure I save it. Um, for this couple of analysis, there's lots of different boundary conditions on nuclear properties, so um, it is possible to maybe a um, error when we go to run it. Uh, but let's create a job. So steady state hot. Right. Continue. Select set the defaults. Right click. Submit. Let's see. And I will when it gets ready. Right click and go monitor, check if it's happy. Okay, so it is has aborted. And so let's see what the error is. Um, so it says degree of freedom 11 and at least one of degrees of freedom 136 plus 7 be active for a couple of temperature. So I'll check the procedure and the element type using the model. Um, so this is good actually to get an error to check. So basically it's saying that uh, the procedure is the analysis step. So we have a couple of temperature displacement, um, but it's saying the element type isn't consistent with that. So if we go to the mesh, we click on the element type uh, for this part over here. And um, I never changed it from its default. So the default is axiometric stress. So they would be stress only elements. What we're trying to do a couple of temperature analysis with stress only elements. So what you have to do is change those to, change those to be coupled temperature displacement elements. So there are special elements that can do temperature and displacement. And um, so that's that's what the error is coming from. So you can see there's options to do with quadratic and linear and things like that. So we can turn on quadratic here just for a change. And they're probably more accurate than of a higher order actually. And, and the linear ones, so I'll right click, submit it again. Check the monitor. Wait for it to run. So quadratic elements would be more expensive to run, but still this is a quick problem. So it solves, dismiss this. If I click for results, I can click on the form configuration. So it's shown the volume stress. So um, it has an interesting distribution. It's not linear. So it's highest on the outside and then it drops the lower in the middle of the wall thickness and then higher again on the inside. And that's, that's a, there's a coupling between the stresses induced by just the pressures versus the stresses induced by the temperature created across the wall. So I can look at say the temperature distribution. So it's hot on the inside, cold on the outside. So the displacement moves the most on the inside a little less on the outside, and I can look at things like the stress uh, through the wall. Um, so in the X direction, or the volume stress, I can see in the X direction, it's applied 60 megapascals on the inside, and whatever it was, 0.19 uh, on the outside. 
And so just to finish this tutorial, I'll just do a plot uh, along a path. So if I'll make a path here, and I'll instead of giving the coordinates, I'll use nodes. So I'm going to select the nodes. Just go add before, select the inside node, select the outside node, uh, middle click, or press done. It's OK. Uh, double next by data, go to path, make sure we're selecting the correct path. On the on deformed, include intersections, plot, that will choose the XX stress, but uh, let's also look at the von Mies stress. Let's plot that one. So that's a bit more interesting, but it drops down and increases again. And you can see it's quite smooth here, even though we've not very many elements, it's actually quite smooth. And that's because we're using quadratic elements. So they're um, assuming curved distributions, let's say, even though this is the, the stress. Um, and then finally, let's just look at the temperature distribution. Apply and plot. And then we can save that if we want. So it be T across all. And so that's over here. You can right click on it here and you can copy and paste it. It's like in the first box, not the top of the column, but the first box. And then scroll down and then shift click. You can copy it and paste it into MATLAB or Excel for comparing it. So you can see it goes from 70 in the inside to and whatever five years, it's, like, it's practically linear. So I'm going to stop the tutorial and here.